How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are going to be going over some cybersecurity interview questions. Now this is mainly tailored towards analyst level positions. Just a lot of the questions are just going to be kind of general. They're going to be casting a wide net just to try to see where you fit in just as a general security analyst. Now once you do get a role uh, in a niche figured out the questions are going to be a lot more specific to the role Like I personally work in vulnerability management So all the questions that I get for senior and principal level stuff are going to only be focused on kind of process oriented and Things specific to vulnerability management, but this is for people that have not had a security job before I will say, uh, given that it is kind of casting a wide net, it is going to probably be one of your more, most difficult uh, interviews you'll probably ever have. Uh, just the breadth of knowledge you'll have at least, not as far as like the kinds of questions. They're not, they're not insanely difficult, but there's just a ton that cover all sorts of different bases. So the way this uh, is gonna work is I'm gonna go through a giant list of technical and behavioral questions that you'll probably face. Uh, when interviewing. This is not a comprehensive list of whatsoever. And basically I'm just gonna ask the question. I'm gonna pause for like one or two seconds. So after the question, I'll pause. You can pause and practice answering the question yourself. Anything you do not know, and this is a pro tip, anything that you do not know, do not try to answer because the people interviewing you will know the answer. And anything you try to explain that you do not know, they will know and they'll catch on to that. The best answer you can give when you do not know an answer is as simple as this. I do not know at this time, but I'm willing to follow up in an email. You can't, you can't, you can't really complain at that when you're an interview, uh, into interviewer, not an interviewee. So anyways, I got 25 technical uh, questions and it looks like about eight or 10. I didn't count. I have it all written out right here. So without further ado, let's get into it. What happens behind the scenes when you go to blackburnsecurity.com? What is DNS? Can you explain the different kinds of firewalls and the purpose of each? What are some vulnerability analysis tools that you have used? Where do you get your cybersecurity news from? Can you explain the difference between uh, vulnerability, threat, and risk? Can you describe your most recent security project? What do these Linux commands do? Ping, traceroute, grep, nano or vim, awk, chmod, chown, ssh, ifconfig or ip, ls. How does OS fingerprinting work? What are some commonly used ports? How is a TCP connection established and what is the difference between UDP and TCP? How is a TLS connection established? What is Active Directory? What is a remote code execution and buffer flow, yeah, buffer overflow vulnerability? Can you describe the difference between authorization and authentication? What is two factor authentication and what are the different factors you can use? What is a SQL injection vulnerability? What is a cross-site scripting vulnerability? What is input validation and sanitization? Can you describe the difference between asymmetric and symmetric encryption? What is the difference between hashing and encryption? 
What is salting? What is the biggest security concern inside an organization? What is CVE, CVSS, and CWE? What is the difference between a router and a switch? What do you know about PCI and NIST 800-171? So that concludes a kind of general technical uh, interview questions you might receive. Um, these are some questions that I have seen throughout my time interviewing people and being interviewed. Um, these are kind of general questions. Uh, you might get these at small organizations, but from my personal experience, this has come from Fortune 100 SOCs or security operation centers. So the next part of this is going to be the behavioral or personal questions. These are really hard to kind of prepare yourself for because they just, you don't know what they're going to ask. Like you could focus on all these technical questions, but these ones make you really think and you kind of be, you know, you got to kind of make up these answers on the spot. There's going to be two questions in here. I can guarantee you that you're going to get asked no matter where you go. So anyways, let's get into it. Tell us about yourself. Who is your role model in cybersecurity? Why Blackburn Security? Or you can replace Blackburn Security with any other company. Describe a difficult situation you had to overcome. What is your biggest weakness? Hint, hint. They're going to ask that one. Describe a conflict you had professionally. And what that means is a time where you and a coworker or whoever, you cannot come to, a, I guess, an equal decision on something and you had to overcome it either by agreeing with them or you were able to convince them to agree with you. Basically, this question is to scope out, did you have analysis paralysis and how do you overcome analysis paralysis? Do you spend too much time analyzing a situation and you paralyze and you actually do not take any action and the problem persists. Why should we hire you? Can you explain cybersecurity to a child? And that's a question to explain cybersecurity like I'm a child. It's not a yes or no question. <laughs> Tell me about a time you fell short on a project. What are some risks that you have taken professionally? So that is going to be a kind of general behavioral question that you'll actually probably get at any level in security. Um, I've gotten those as an analyst. I've gotten those as an engineer and senior engineer um, and a few other positions. But those are kind of just a scope out how you think about things. What's your process? Uh, how open you are and how you're able to articulate certain things that are kind of difficult to answer. Um, the big ones are like explaining cybersecurity to a child. Are you able to articulate a super duper technical project that you're doing or a technical, you know, a vulnerability? Are you able to explain a vulnerability to someone that is like a database owner? Because they don't really care about CVE, blah, 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 blah. They just care about keeping their systems running while maintaining security compliance? Are you able to explain a complex vulnerability to them where they just leave knowing what exactly they need to do sort of thing? Um, now, a couple things that I would say to when it when it comes time to the, your interview, uh, you can be concise if you want to, but the more you tell them, the more that you like dump your thought process on everything, honestly, I, I, I dig that. Some people, if you're going for a management position, they might want you to be more concise, you know, being able to explain something very shortly because time is money sort of thing, you know, all that stuff. Being able to explain high level concepts very shortly, but get everything you need in that conversation. Or if you're technical, if it's a technical position, dumping your whole brain out. If you want to talk about the three-way TCP handshake, 
have at it. If you want to talk about DNS recursion, caching, blah, blah, all that, have at it. Um, I would say another way, a good um, format you can structure the way you answer these questions is in a method called STAR. Situation, task, action, results. It is very simple. It's very easy to remember. I'll give you an example of a STAR question that I answered using that method. So instead of just saying, well, you know, I, uh, I, I, I fixed a vulnerability scan um, and it, you know, I was able to scan the network without any outages. That's not, I mean, it, 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 you answer it concisely, but like, let me give you another answer. Same exact result of the answer, but way more like verbose. A better response would be, so I was running vulnerability scans on a network and every time I hit a specific operating system, those devices would go offline. So what I ended up doing was I was able to get a sandbox environment of that operating system with the same load and scan them in a controlled environment. I would scan them using our normal option profile and see what would happen to the operating system. At the same time, I was grabbing logs, resource utilization, and timestamps, and I was able to figure out that it was indeed our scan causing these systems to go offline. So what I ended up doing was fine tuning the scans. So instead of scanning those systems for eight minutes, it would scan them for two hours. I then conducted the same exact scan with the same exact devices, but with a longer scan time. And I did not cause a spike in resource utilization. And I was able to scan the environment uh, without any sort of disruptions. I was able to hit every single one of those. And let me tell you, that is like, oh, sort of thing. So you start, pro tip, everyone loves it. So anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoying content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification enabled. Um, yeah, also join my Discord and I got some books down below. I'm also live and active on TikTok. If you wanna follow me on TikTok, I'll just make some quick hot take videos on there and y'all can follow me on there. Anyways, that's it. Y'all take care, goodbye.